Okay, so today I'll be talking about copper toxicity in sheep. Uh, it's kind of an unusual thing with this species. So there are two different types of copper toxicity. There's chronic, which is like happens after sheep consume a lot very, very quickly. Um, so a lot of times this happens if animals like get out of their pen and eat like a whole bag of feed. Or um, there are several different species in a barn and they get out and eat like pig feed, for example. Um, and then there's acute copper toxicity, which is when the animals are consistently fed higher levels of copper than necessary. Um, and then, so essentially the copper, the excess copper is stored in their liver. And no, don't you mean chronic? Chronic is the... Chronic? Oh, did I get them backwards? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, it switched. I apologize. And then, um, oh yeah, okay. You and said then, it wrong. You got it right on the thing. No, no I switched no, them on no, the thing. No, you thing. switched yeah. them. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Just pretend okay. those titles are switched. And then um, once the liver is saturated, all the copper kind of like is released at once and then into the bloodstream and then it causes a lot of damage. So symptoms are lethargic animals, jaundice, and then dark and red urine. And all of these symptoms pretty much mean that the animal is going to die. But usually in um, big production, uh, the first symptom you see is death. So this is, a, is an example of jaundice. It's actually pretty bad, but that, so you can see it in the tissues. So kind of like physiology, physiology is what happens is that um, it causes damage to the liver with the storing of the excess copper, and then the internal parts become jaundice, which is like what all this is happening. And then the liver becomes swollen, and then the kidneys um, become dark <coughs> and swollen and red as well. And then, uh, yeah, the copper is released into the blood, and it is too much for the body to handle. So treatment, um, use a veterinary, veterinarian, but then you can kind of um, feed ammonium molecules. Is that how you say it? I think that's close enough. Okay, or sodium sulfate, um, because these two uh, elements help counteract the effect of copper. So um, they bind to the copper during digestion and then it's not being able to be pulled through the digestive system and be absorbed. So for prevention methods, uh, you should check the copper level on feeds. So some cattle feed is high in copper and then like uh, chicken and uh, swine feed is very high in copper. So you should not feed those. And then it's also very important that you discuss with elevators if your uh, breed is specifically susceptible to this because if they don't clean out um, after they're doing pig feed, for example, then it could still give them uh, chronic poisoning. Um, and then you can test your forages as well or add uh, those other elements to the diet. So why is this a problem? Like why not just not feed copper to sheep at all? Um, so it is an essential nutrient, so they need it. Um, but there's not much difference between the level that is needed and then the um, that will cause damage. So they need about eight parts per million and usually feed contains about 15 um, and then about 20 is toxic. But um, Different breeds have different levels that they can handle, which is really interesting, but scientists believe that it's due to the limited amount of copper that is in like England and Irish soils, which is where a lot of our sheep breeds come from. And then the sheep were used to holding onto it so they could use it later, but then now that we have it more readily available, um, they can have copper toxicity. So if you don't feed them at all, it can cause deficiency which is anemia, brittle bones, loss of hair or wool pigmentation, poor wool growth, stingy or stringy wool or swayback, which is what these are both pictures of is swayback sheep. <coughs> and my sources. Yeah, questions, comments? Anybody have experience with this or any questions? Go, go I'll let you point. I know that in our fair our county fair that it was the pigs would come or the sheep would come in after the pigs. So we had to make sure we swept the ground really well and we could get it like to midnight just to make sure there was not even a drop of feet on the ground. I mean isn't that amazing? 
how like the safe levels were like four or five, and then the toxic levels are 10 parts per million or something. We can go back to that figure. I mean, that's incredible to be that, like there it is, 48 is what they need. That's parts per million. But if you get to just double that, it's going to be toxic or a little bit more. I mean, that's how fine it has to be controlled. So when and she mentioned elevators or like feed companies, whenever they're making feed, if you get somebody that's sloppy and somebody makes swine feed and they don't clean out the bottom of the mixer and then they do a batch of sheep feed, there's a problem. I mean, look at you're staying up till midnight trying to get the thing. It's that critical and I guess I never knew that it's basically genetics, right? <coughs> it ends up being sheep were developed in a copper poor soil because all this stuff is coming from the soil, right? All the minerals in anything, it comes from the soil into the plants. Mm -hmm. And so they were genetically uh, not selected, but they were reared in an environment where they only, you know, they had a lot less copper. So then genetically they stored copper. Right, the liver storing copper, and if you get them too much, then boom, it's made to store copper, and you have a toxic problem. And one of the big reasons there's feed recalls for sheep, a lot of it is somebody's got a toxic level of, and if we have time at the end, I'll show you, like, if you go in, there's feed that's been recalled from sheep, it's usually because of high copper levels. There's another one over here. So like uh, Katahdin's and like Dorpers are like uh, South African breeds, so they are like, they still have copper toxicity, but their levels are like almost 35 parts per million when it's toxic, so, wow. so they have, it's quite a big range, mm -hmm. but this so level is more of your like Shire breeds, like Amstrops, mm -hmm. stuff like That's that. That's very interesting. Any other comments? Questions? Did you have one earlier? Yeah, um, I don't know if you'd be able to answer it. Um, since the meat is only 4 to 8, why do they make the feed 14 to 15 since it's so close to being toxic? Part of it is um, due to the forage requirements of the sheep. So a lot of our grasses and hay <coughs> over here is just higher than it is. So. So, so that middle line says a lot of times the feed is 14 to 15 by default, just the copper and the natural and yeah, so they try to keep okay. like concentrate feeds and like pellets and stuff pretty low, but okay. So yeah. that's that's closer than I was interpreting. Yeah, look at then just a little bit more parts per million. That's parts per million. Yeah, yeah. it's very close. It's very amazing. <coughs> okay, thank you, Rachel. Come on up. <laughs>